Hello and welcome to today's episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, my name is Guy and today we are looking at inter-PC relationships. And uh, we're not talking the dating game or Tinder or whatever the social apps are these days. What we're talking about is PCs who are related to one another that come to the table. So a brother and sister pair, for example, or lifelong friends, co-workers. What do we do with those kinds of relationships and how do we play them so we get the most out of them without suffering from the dangers of inter-PC relationships. Now they can be very powerful and they can certainly make sure that your characters start with a familiar. They also start with a relationship so that you can move straight into the adventure, you can move straight into the story. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. And there are different types of relationships that we can unpack as well. So let's look at why. Why do we want to have a relationship. So first, of course, is narrative. It's quite fun to go, oh, well, why don't we play brother and sister? That could be quite cool. Absolutely. That can be very cool. It's interesting to explore those kinds of uh, options. That's the third option here is to explore. I'm kind of bouncing around. Uh, so there's narrative. There's the exploration of, well, what would a brother and sister be like if they were both barbarian hunters? Or if the brother is a sorceress, and is not very strong, and the sister is this incredibly strong barbarian gladiator, what's the relationship like between them? And to then explore that relationship. Last week we looked at player versus player. This is kind of verging or inspired by that to a degree, because there is going to be conflict. I, My sister and I had lots of conflict. Um, we had conflict for 30 years until eventually we realized that we we're both adults and we should probably stop. So, And then we formed a very good relationship, a very supporting relationship. So that's an interesting journey that we've been on. Not at the time, of course, now it's interesting. But the idea here is that your PCs are going to go on a similar kind of a similar kind of journey. They're going to explore those relationships. So it gives you a lot of interesting narrative options. A lot of a lot of interpersonal role play can happen. Now, it also gives you adventures. Because there's two characters that are involved in the story, they now have a com com <laughs> a common background. And that common background, the GM can then play to and know that they're going to get buy-in from your characters. If your characters are, say, co-workers and your boss is threatened by an ogre, uh, a lot of people probably would like that, actually, but your boss is threatened by an ogre, the two characters are more likely to respond to that than one character. So the adventure hooks are a lot easier for the GMs to throw out. If you have a common background together, it makes it kind of flow better. So what are the different types of relationships that you can have? Well, in my opinion, there's three broad categories, and then we can break it down even more. And I've linked them, I've listed them in order of emotional entanglement. And that's going to lead us to the dangers that's going to come up a little bit later on in the video. So the three different types are work-related. Now, I know that sounds not very fantasy-like. Oh, well, what's your work? Oh, I work as a wizard. I work as a warrior. I work as a, a thief. Uh, but you get the idea. Work relationships, things like, oh, we're colleagues. It could be we studied together. I consider universities sort of in that workspace. You know, we studied together. We lectured together. We are both Starship engineer technicians. And we went on the same computer upgrade uh, AI advanced programming course. Um, so work is a it's a relationship. It's a known individual. I know this person. I have a certain amount of feelings for them. Um, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I um, am aware that so-and-so exists because we work together. Oh, I didn't like... Work. Oh, I really? I got stuck with you? That's that's the one that's going to come adventuring? You really? So there is room for a lot of emotional growth that comes out of that workspace. What's also interesting is to then look and see what happens in that workspace when there are emotions that flow in. If you're in a science fiction game or if you're in a military style game, what is that emotion emotional development? If we're looking at a Call of Cthulhu style game, often those games require the characters to have some kind of relationship to one another, whether it's the detective and his secretary. How do we express that? How do we explore that? Where is that relationship going to go? Well, it's going to evolve 
probably into friends and then into the family style of relationship, won't it? Well, let's see. So with friends, we're then talking about people who like to hang out with one another. There's much more of an investment there. There's usually a time uh, investment as well. They've spent lots of time together. I've known that person since I grew up or I've known that person for the last 20 minutes. There's a difference in how those relationships will play out. But there's more of an investment. So friends are more likely to help one another out. They're more likely to be forgiving of one another. They're more likely to go on adventures with one another than simply work colleagues. Work colleagues might have a mild interest or a, a, a passive aggressive curiosity, perhaps, or they're forced to do so because work has instructed them to do that. The grand high mage has ordered them to work together, those kinds of things. Friends, however, are cooperatively working together. They're helping each other out. They're exploring these things. And I don't think, I think, well, let's rephrase that. Apparently, I just don't think. Friends can evolve into family, but oftentimes they get stuck as friends because once they're friends, the, rem the emotional links are very, very strong, but we can't move beyond the fact that they're our friends. So there's a certain amount of personal space that we can't broach simply because they're our friends. They know us so well to give them that much more is oftentimes the most difficult thing that one can possibly do. So friend zones basically start to appear. Again, that's not difficult. And I, we're sort of talking about this and we're going, but these are imaginary characters. Yes, they are. But we can imagine those kinds of situations because we as humans, as players, are in them all the time. So we can bring that to our characters and we can try and explore and test things and see where they go. That leads me, of course, to family. So family of, could be brother and sister. It could be mother and daughter. There we have to be aware, of course, that you've got this authority figure and a, 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 a daughter or, or, or a child. There is a power play that's going to start happening there. So go and watch the video on power plays. But the idea is that there's a, a very close link. We're also talking about lovers. So people who have fallen in love, maybe your characters start as husband and wife, maybe they start as um, girlfriend and girlfriend or boyfriend and boyfriend, or uh, maybe there's three involved in the relationship. I, whatever the, the emotional entanglement, it's at that point of love. And it's very, very close. It's very, very intimate. Those create all sorts of interesting stories. You've got your Romeo and Juliet type scenarios that start kicking in. Again, it's up to you as the player to play these correctly and to embrace them and to look at them. Now, that leads us to the dangers, because if you've got these you've got these relationships starting to form, they can become emotional. They can become very, very emotional because they demand it. If I'm sitting there with a fellow player and our two characters are in love, the way they're going to talk to each other, the way that they're going to act around each other is very, very different from perhaps the way that my friend and I are going to talk to each other outside of the game. So there are boundaries that you can cross accidentally, especially if you get in the heat of the moment and you say, my love, I want you to do this for me, please. And the person sitting opposite the table, of course, is your friend. and They go, yes, of course, my love, I'll do that for you. And you're just looking so beautiful today. That can start to send some very strong emotional messages, which if you're not comfortable role playing in, if you're not comfortable being in that space, can become very, very dangerous. So what I am going to emphasize now is make sure before the session and after the session that you and your fellow players who have got emotional connections of these natures chat about it and say, oh, watch today. I'm going to be the cheesiest boyfriend you've ever ever come across just just watch this right i take a block of cheese and i stick it however you want to express it but talk about it beforehand and after the session sit back and go oh my god i'm so pleased that we're not in a relationship because you are the worst <laughs> calling me my honey pumpkin mushroom what's that if anyone actually called me that in real life i'd probably marry them no well, don't well i mean if that's the case that's the case be honest but Generally speaking, you should unpack afterwards and beforehand to make sure that everyone is in a safe space and that there's no one going home going, well, I personally do like that other player and they seem to be very into my character, but was it my character or was it me? And then you go home and you start writing, Dear Diary, I'm in love and my fellow player is in love and that means that we're both in love and we're going to get married and have 15 children and 12 cats. That's not going to happen. Well, the cat part might, but the children won't. So the idea here is that you've got to 
got to make sure that players are comfortable in that space. Now, players who are more theatrical, players who are more actor, sort of focused, who have much more of a thespionic background, those kinds of characters, those kinds of players anyway, generally will be able to play this a lot better, a lot more emotionally detached from the actual character than someone who has had no experience with that, who's now got this deluge of emotions being poured upon them. So you've got to be very, very careful. That is a big danger that you run when you're playing these kinds of games, when you're getting so immersed, so involved in these kinds of relationships. It can be very, very difficult. Now, in last week's episode, I spoke about the experience that I'm having with a player. We're, the, we're playing together as brothers, and there's a power player, and there's very strong emotions going on but we do talk about it beforehand and afterwards saying listen i i seriously i'm screaming at you as a character not as a player as a player i'm trying not to laugh while i'm doing it because what you're giving me back is absolutely priceless it's so tragic the way these two brothers are interacting with each other but for us as players it's so much fun so you've got to make sure that it doesn't become personal that's another very very important thing is it's not you it is the character that's why we role playing we're playing that role we are not that role. That's the important thing. And it can also become quite demanding. You have to be aware that once you start down this journey, if you don't really feed it, if you don't really nourish it, it's going to die. So you do need to keep at it. You keep keep working at it. And it's also a very good way of sort of practicing out socialization and these different types of relationships with players in a safe space. So that if you're going to do it in real life, you kind of have an idea of well, the next time you go up to that woman and invite her out and you compliment on her beard, you should expect to have the same outcome happening there as would happen at the di at the uh, gaming table. Anyway, that's the ideas that I have on relationships. I think they're fantastic. I think that they're done correctly. They can really make such a fantastic contribution to the game. They can really drive it to the next level. They can make everyone walk away from the table going, ah, we've just done Game of Thrones. That's what we've done. We've got emotions. We've got brothers and sisters and sex. And and it's just, it's, it's, and the father and the son, the way you two played it, that was, I was nearly in tears whilst the two of you were busy hacking at each other or doing this or doing that or whilst you were two were expressing your love for one another you've got to got to see the power of these things to appreciate just how amazing they can be from a storytelling from a role-playing perspective it does have to be handled very very carefully though immature players players who don't have a lot of emotional intelligence they talk about uh, you, the emotional intelligence or uh, don't know necessarily what's going on you need to be very careful with those kinds of people because they can get emotionally hurt and that is the last thing that we want what do you think about interpersonal PC relationships? Do you play as a couple? And as a couple, do you have your characters as couples? That's a whole area that we didn't touch upon, really. Do you express that in the game? Do you play opposites in the game? Do you get jealous when your player's character starts making out with that orc? How do you feel about that? It's an interesting question and something that can be handled and looked at uh, in a very mature way and enjoyed and cherished can also become quite dangerous. All interrelationships really are. Leave your comments below. Let's discuss, let's unpack, and let's see if we can find a happy course on which to plot this very, very interesting way of telling our wonderful stories and our wonderful hobby. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing. <laughs>